In order to show you what the MIDI editor is all about, I'd like to record some data first so we can have a look at the, the data in the MIDI editor. Let's go. Okay, that should be okay for now. Now you open the media editor by either double clicking on a part, I'll close it again, press return, or by going into the edit menu and selecting edit there. I'll press one to go to the left locator and hit enter. That's the melody again. Let's have a look at the MIDI editor in more detail. These are the notes that you've just heard. And um, and a good, good thing to do in the MIDI editor is to switch on the speaker symbol if you want to hear the actual notes. Now whenever I click on a note, you can hear the notes being played. And you can scroll through the notes using the arrow keys on the keyboard as well. This is your keyboard, or like a, well it's a keyboard, you can click on the notes here as well, and this keyboard tells you what the notes are that we've played here. So we've played a D, a D4, four times, and then we went down to a C sharp, down to a B, down to an A, and so on. At the top of the screen you've got your info line, which tells you more about the notes. For example, this is an A, as we've established before. It's an A3, and it starts in bar 2, on B2, on the 4th, 16th node, at tick 2128. Here's your bar 2. That line represents bar 2. These slightly thicker lines represent the beats. Our note is um, after B2, there's B2, 4th, 16th note, that's the 2nd, 16th note, 3rd, 16th note, 4th, 16th note. I'll go down here, down this line, and you can see that this note is, is a little bit further away from the 4th, 16th note, exactly 2128 ticks away from this note. Um, we can fix the placement of the notes later on when we talk about quantizing. You can change the notes by just picking them up and moving them up and down. Let's say I'll pick up the first note and then bring it up, back down, and I can place it anywhere I like. Down there, for example, or there. Put it down there an octave lower and play play the tune again. Did you hear that? I'll put move the note back. The MIDI editor not only tells you what notes you've played, but also how you've played them. And you can see how they've been played in this window here, which is reserved for the controller messages. But usually you might find that you have the velocity invisible. So I get to the velocity by clicking on the mod icon here and I'll choose velocity and here are all these lines representing velocities. Higher lines represent higher levels of velocity and lower lines lower levels. I'll, I'll hide the transport bar by pressing F12 on the keyboard and um, 
and then pick up my pencil in order to change some, some of those velocity levels. Look at this field here while I'm changing the levels. The max is 127 and the lowers are 0. I'll select this note here. Now the velocity bar becomes black as well. And also, because the note's selected, you can see in the info line the velocity level. Velocity on is 127. And if I change this here, velocity on goes down to 32. And 1 is the lowest I can draw. Velocity is, in effect, the, um, the hardness of how, you, how hard you hit the keys. So if you play something very, very softly on the piano, you end up with very low velocity levels. And if you really go for it on the piano, you'll end up with um, higher velocity levels. The sound I've got now is much better for showing the velocity levels. like this. Let's start adding some color to the to the screen here. We go down to the pencils and let's choose velocity colors. High velocities use reds and lower velocities use blues and anything in between uses shades of pink and, and violet. If you change the velocity of a note, like this one for example, and make it higher, the note becomes red and if you reduce the velocity, it becomes blue. You can also increase the velocity up here. I'm keeping my right mouse button pressed. And you can also go down with the left mouse button. It becomes quieter and quieter and quieter. If you don't want to hear these noises, then you could just switch off the speaker symbol. And move it up. And so on. Next. Let's try using pitch colors. Pitch colors. So now all the notes are colored according to their pitches. D's are in blue. C sharps are green. There's another C sharp here in green. B's are orange. And the reds are lightly pink. If you go into this field here again, onto this icon, and, and, and after you've chosen pitch colors, this pitch colors option comes up and you can choose the pitch colors. There's a C, um, yes, it's C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, and B. So if you want to change the color of, of let's say this A, then you go for B, A sharp, A. Choose a color. Let's turn the A green. Nice bold green. Yes. Add it to the colors. Press OK. And all A's have become green now. You could use colors to, for example, color all the notes of a certain key, let's say the key of D, in the same color. Pitch colors. This is a D note. D is a blue. It's not that blue, but let's just take this one. Add to it. D, D sharp. E is in the, in the key of D. 
F isn't, but F sharp is. Blue. G is, let's turn that one blue. A is, let's turn it blue. B is, let's turn it blue. And C sharp is as well. And all the other colors, let's turn them red. Red. All the notes in the key of D are blue now. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C sharp. And all the other notes which are not in the key of D, i.e. C, D sharp, F, G sharp, and A sharp are red. So hit OK. And as you can see, the whole tune here is in the key of D. But if you had a tune, or if you were to um, freely improvise on the piano and you play a lot of, let's say, wrong notes, then you can easily identify those wrong nodes um, because they're in, in red and then quickly delete them.